Good afternoon, friends. Stephen Benoon here with Israeli News Live. What is going on in the White House? Is it a coup with the president's own advisors? Even his lawyer, Michael Cohen, Trump's two motives for election denial, according to Michael Cohen, this coming out today. And then, of course, we have uh, Rick Wiles with True News and uh, his team there. We got Doc and Ed. Uh, also joining in with Rick Wiles with an amazing and explosive interview. And uh, they're talking about a meeting that took place in the White House this weekend where uh, uh, I believe it's Patrick Byrne, uh, Sydney, um, the, the Sydney Powell, the attorney uh, that was thrown off the Giuliani team, and also uh, that of uh, General Flynn were there at the White House. They were able to get a private meeting for 10 minutes with the president, but ended up lasting five hours or four and a half hours. And uh, and of course, the president's lawyer is coming in and we find out through the information that's been uh, leaked out uh, by, uh, let me let me see, get over here, get over here to, uh, th these are these are some of uh, the president's advisors right here. This is the, the team that is really throwing the president under the bus. I reached out to my own uh, uh, friends, both Pentagon and the White House, to find out what was going on. This was confirmed. Nothing could really be said about what was what actually happened there. But putting the pieces together, putting the intel I've been given together over the last couple of months, I realize President Donald Trump has been set up and he's set up by his own inner circle to bring him down, to bring his demise down. Uh, and so, although I do realize the president has made some very uh, bad decisions on his own, you have to remember a president depends on their advisors on how they lead and run the country. But the president of the United States is being manipulated, and I likened it to a coup. Uh, his own advisors around him, these attorneys, are like illusionists. They're just wanting to make him disappear. And uh, so we're going to be playing some of the clip here from uh, Rick Wiles, uh, his team there at True News. My hat goes off to them. God bless them for the amazing work they did on this story here. Let me get you started here and bring you up the date of what's going on uh, with this story. And then we will weigh in on the information that we've been gleaning today as well, going back over our notes and, uh, and, and realizing that our country, our republic, truly is uh, at a great, uh, how would you say it? We, we're on the verge of losing the republic. But it, does, it didn't start with President Trump. This has been going on for a while. Uh, in fact, it was shared with me the influence of a certain country just south of Lebanon in the Middle East and those people of a certain faith of that origin there have such a powerful influence, not just with the president, but more than 95% make up his advisors of this group, as well as Republicans and Democrats across the board. We are being thrown under the bus. And of course, China is only their military superpower they're going to use to bring a war against this nation in the not so distant future there. Listen to Rick here. Advising President Trump to ignore his inner circle of advisors and move boldly to challenge the election of Joe Biden is Patrick Byrne, former CEO of Overstock.com. Mr. Byrne recently told a podcast interviewer that he was used by the FBI in 2016 to offer a $20 million bribe to Hillary Clinton on behalf of a fictitious, unnamed foreign country. Neither the FBI nor Mrs. Clinton denied Mr. Byrne's shocking allegation. Edward Zoll and Doc Burkhart have a lot of information for you tonight. Here we are, gentlemen. The end of December... Uh, they say around Christmas, the news is supposed to slow down, right? Yeah, and we're still talking about whether the November 3rd election will be successfully <laughs> challenged and overturned. Right. And um, the number of people who believe that it will, uh, that it will happen, uh, the number of people are dwindling. But there are some 
uh, curious things going on inside the White House. As we now know, Sidney Powell finally got access to the White House. And Edward, uh, you were you, you told me that uh, you you were told that she actually invited herself to the White House, somehow managed to get in the White House and, and attend uh, the meeting. Yes, uh, that's according to the former CEO of Overstock.com, Patrick Byrne. Uh, he's given uh, some rather interesting interviews with some unknown podcasters, independent journalists, that really should be the front page news uh, across the world right now. The first uh, is that Patrick Byrne claims, uh, and actually has evidence, he was present for a meeting, this meeting, the 4.5-hour meeting. He was in Friday. the White House meeting with President Trump. Was, yes, was that the photos. first one? Yeah, the first one. He's claiming that uh, Sidney Powell has since attempted to return and has been rebuffed, but uh, we have seen reporting and photographic evidence of Sidney Powell inside the security perimeter at the White House as late as, as yesterday, on oh, Monday. Here's the photo. The, so this was Monday, right? This is Monday. This is okay. taken by a White House uh, correspondent. There's Sidney Powell, and she, you see she's, she's got smiling. the pass. She's and smiling. She's got her assistant. And, and that pass, that's an A pass. Yes. There. So... I don't know what that means, and so, but, it's but kind of it has an A. I mean, <clears throat> well, the point being, though, what's gonna what we're gonna find out here in just a moment. We're gonna play uh, also a clip there where um, uh, Rick uh, has the interview with Mr. Byrne on these uh, these as they call them relatively unknown independent journalist channels there, and we'll find out what actually went on inside uh, this pre this this meeting where uh, we find we actually find out that originally. Uh, they got about 10 minutes alone with the president before uh, things really begin to turn awkward inside of uh, this White House meeting. And like I said, I reached out to some friends there that I know, and uh, they confirmed that this was true. And this is what is going on on a regular basis with the president. So sometimes it makes me wonder, All you know, as you all know, I am against his stance on those uh, seven little fake laws that we keep hearing about uh, that they blame on Noah. And, uh, and of course, this warp speed uh, nonsense. Uh, but it makes me realize President's team that he is surrounded by with this inner circle, they're the ones that are guiding the policies of this country. And what are they doing? They're doing, they're driving it right into the ground. Uh, those of you that remember, let me just bring something up for a reminder for you here. I'd got this Intel report back in October where it says Yemen looks sad. Saudi's registering some victories with the help of Bibi, talking about Benjamin Netanyahu. Turks have moved some of al-Nusra fighters to the Caucasus and they started their, you know what, there. But there are, not, that's not, but that's not, but, th but these are not the reasons why he contacted me. He's talking about his own source. A devious red flag is in the offing. Trump is behind a CIA, FBI, are pissed, pardon the expression. Apparently, even Mossad said no. So the contract has gone to privates in Jordan. Saudis and other Gulfs, uh, uh, Gulf are not competent enough, talking about Gulf states, to pull it off. Egypt was not chosen. And I don't know why. I guess everybody is scared. If, they, if it won't work, they had uh, to face the Democrats and an unleashed Iran. Benjamin Netanyahu and Trump have a really bad relationship right now because Bibi thought of him as an idiot and lied to him in a couple of times and Trump is not happy. That has hurt Jared's position too. All right, so there was a major rift that was going on and also a plan of a false flag attack. Now, I got more confirmation on that uh, the same day, said the intel community is furious with Trump. That is why they are forced to outsource the red flag. I do not understand. Apparently, the Mohaddeen al khalik which is the, uh, the Iranian uh, Mohaddeen, were initially approached by the administration. Notice, not by President Trump, but by the administration. And that is how Iranian intel got wind of it. But for some reason, it was canceled. Possibly was a counter intel move and there is nothing to it. But it would make sense for Trump wanting to turn the election on its head. Now, see, that's the opinion of this friend of mine that wrote this letter to me, right? But notice who was the one that was trying to outsource the red flag, right? 
It was the it was the Trump administration. They approaching said the intel community is furious with Trump. They're furious with him. So even and we're talking about Mike Pompeo and all. He actually says that. Watch watch what he says here. If you ask me, it is already too late to shift the election, and maybe that is the cause of Trump's anger with Pompeo. You see, the president, for one, he knows that this was a fraudulent election. He knows he won by a landslide. But he's being duped on every single corner. He's being played by his own inner circle. It's a coup d'etat. They are literally overthrowing the presidency and the democracy in our republic. You know, regardless of what you think about Trump, I mean, I, like I said, I have issues as well, but I, I realize more my issues are founded not so much on his policies, but how he is being directed. Now, it's a shame on him not making the stance to say, look, I am against this whole thing about what's going on with Corona. He should have made a stance against it. When he ran for the election, he said he was going to challenge vaccines. Did he do it? No. Why? Because of the puppet masters that are turning his head. I was actually told that 95 plus percent, and this is both Democrat and Republican, is ran by a group of individuals that have a very strong belief that support that little country south of Lebanon. So let me say it like that for those that would try to call you some kind of anti-name there. They're more anti-gentilic than they are anything else, and they're anti-American as well. And sadly enough, it is also the Christian evangelicals, the, the NRA that have been backing Trump, that have caused him to go and suck up to that little country south of Lebanon that has caused us all the troubles that we're going through right now and has caused us to be in the Middle East in endless wars. That's why I said recently the Trump, uh, President Trump was making a decision to actually not only pull the troops out, but pull the plug on the CIA. Well, if you pull the plug on the CIA, you're going to be like Kennedy. You know what they're going to do to you. Let's listen to a little bit more of this here. Let me find the, the right place here. Here we go. This is where they're going to play Patrick here. Let's listen in as Ed talks about it. About the meeting at the White House. The one that no one has heard anything about past the, the establishment media's reporting on it. This is from a first-hand source who was in the Oval Office with the president. All right, let's listen. What can you tell us about that meeting? First thing to know is that a flat lie that martial law was discussed or anything like that was discussed is a total fabrication. I was there for the entire meeting. It's a total fabrication. I saw and Michael Flynn saw and Sidney Powell saw and another lawyer who, who was there who may not want her name mentioned, so I won't, but she worked for Sydney. Uh, what we saw was so dispiriting, and I think I got a microcosm of what Trump has put up with for four years. They, uh, they are in an automatic, reflexive mentality of, no, we better not. No, we better not. Oh, that might be dangerous. Oh, no, that might be. Oh, no, that would be unusual. We better not. Well, the, pre the, the president did not know I was in the, his hotel yeah. as far as I I've been putting up all kinds of people here. And cyber people, all kind of whole teams of people. I've spent half a million dollars of my own money here in his hotel trying to reverse what is a coup. This is a well, it's a psyop. It's a it's a coup, and so he it's not. They haven't given me a penny discount or anything. So I'm doing this all on my own nickel. I don't want to pretend that I'm like on the president's team. This is I just happen to be parked at the Trump Hotel. I'll probably be here another couple months until this is over. Well, it's kind of funny. We sort of got in without their permission. And when, I mean, we got in with, I, I won't say exactly how I got in, but let's, how we got in, but it was a little bit of an impromptu and a bit of, a little bit of a Jedi, a few Jedi mind tricks to get us into the Oval Office at the right time with him. He didn't quite understand we were, anyway, it was well, a bit doesn't of a Jedi that, I mean, you know, you have to break through their gatekeepers, Patrick, right? And the gatekeepers of the swamp. It was really quite, I mean, the lawyers, the swamp only showed up 10 minutes into, we had 10 minutes alone with the president. What I see going is we come up with enough evidence, or a ton of evidence, if he would sign the right piece of paper today, we would come up with a ton of evidence, and 
that on January 5th, there'd be a million people or more Indeed. marching on the mall. There'd be millions of people marching around the country. And on the 6th, there would also be millions of people protesting around the country, which would force Congress to, to look at the evidence and, you know, follow the Constitution. Uh, yeah, follow the Constitution. That's Amazing. what it required them to do. And what not is- just take the easy path. And all these people... These guys who come and give talks at high schools, the guest speakers is all about, you know, that day you have to find your moral courage and stand up. Well, if all that evidence is out there and there are millions of people who see it and are out there and uh, and those politicians don't. Uh, the state, I want to try to move forward just a little bit because I actually listened to a lot of the, uh, the, the broadcast here. And I want to get into what was being discussed inside the Oval Office. And I know that there are two different places where uh, this is played, two different interviews. So I'm going to try to skip to the next one because the next one gives more details that uh, that Rick and I would put up. Uh, And I think it's very important to do that. Let me see if we can find that place there. Let me play here where Rick is speaking here. That would be incredible. I mean, she had to, she had to almost sneak into the White House. And that's what it was. Talking about about, uh, veterans that they have to do whatever Jedi mind tricks. That was the word he Mm -hmm. used. You don't just sneak into yeah, obviously somebody the White in the, House. You somebody in the White House got her inside with Patrick Byrne. But it sounds like it wasn't ten, a scheduled meeting. For 10 minutes, and then the swamp critter showed up to derail the meeting. But is that the meeting that went for five hours? Yes. Oh, that was a hot meeting. There was a lot of shouting in that meeting. This is what we're going to get to. Um, okay, we have another sound bite. Is this from the same podcast? It's a separate interview with an anonymous interviewer. Uh, they go by MG Show. This is uh, who Patrick Byrne decided to talk to about his very uh, interesting meeting with the president. It is in this soundbite you will hear specifically what the president did. And, and here, you're going to hear the president order for something that's going to be quite astonishing. Yeah, so, I mean, we have mountains of stuff like that at this point. There's, we had 50,000 affidavits from Americans around the country of both parties who have written affidavits about the mischief they saw on November 3rd. There are, there's mountains of evidence. We were so taken aback by that, that, that we were really even at that stage. But, yeah, but this wasn't about presenting evidence and, and, we now have, we prepared a very nice package, and they will not, took it back to the White House yesterday. They will not deliver to them. They, but anyway, a package wow. of all, I'm going to put it up online so America can see all, just in a very organized way, all the evidence is absolutely foreign interference. All right, so that, breaking news right Ryan, here, Patrick Byrne is going to put online. After, right? He's going to put, uh, is that going to be on your deep capture? I'll put it up on deep capture. Okay. It's silly at this point. So, so Patrick. None it, of this is getting through to him. They're he, just freaking lying to So him. they're not even getting the information to your president. So He said that I want to go forward with Sidney Powell as special counsel. And I have the, at one point, Chip Maloney said something like, well, you know, you don't, you don't need to, uh, you know, if you want to do this horrible thing, you uh, you can do it verbally. You don't even need a pen and piece of paper. And he went on arguing for 20 minutes. And after that, tr- Mr. Trump said, you know what? I, you, I've i been we're putting up that we, we had those other fights that I just told you about. And Trump finally said, OK, I'm appointing Sydney special counsel and I'm uh, authorizing a security clearance. Let, let me quickly let you guys know what he's talking about. Patrick Cipollone. Uh This is Patrick Cipollone right here. And he's the very guy uh, in the first part of the interview, and I didn't play that part of the clip there, that uh, Patrick was, Patrick Byrne was speaking about. Uh, he was telling the president that there is someone going around uh, that is telling, uh, trying to get everybody to encourage the president to concede the election. Well, it just so happened to be Patrick Cipollone that was doing exactly that. And the president stops uh Stops uh, Mr. Byrne and ask him, who is who's the one that's saying that I should concede the election? And he said, the guy's name is Patrick Cipollone. And the president looks across the advisors in the room, two people back, and there's Patrick Cipollone. And he says, this guy here? He said, is he Patrick Cipollone? He says, yeah, that's he's the guy. All right. So he's going around the, the, his entire team, his lawyers, everything, including Michael Cohen, now coming out today. Trump's two motives for election denial, according to Michael Cohen. Right. And then you have also this guy right here, Mark Meadows, supposed to be the chief of staff. All these guys 
not to mention the many other actors like Pompeo, etc. They are the ones that are controlling the nation from within. They're the advisors. They're the ones that are setting us up. And they're also the ones that are about to cause us to go to war with Iran. It seems like the only purpose and the only interest that is being served is for Israel. Let's face it, that's what's really going on. And that's the whole sad, sickening show that we're finding out about this whole interview here. Let's listen a little bit more, though. The next day, she called Mark Meadows and said, OK, I'm going to need. So she she was Trump said, I want to make her White House special counsel and give her security clearance. The next day, she called Mark Meadows and said, I need a I'm going to need an office. And Mark Meadows said, well, I don't know if we can really get you an office at the White House. And she said, well, then I at least need a badge so I can come back and forth. And Mark Meadows said, well, I don't really know if I can get you a badge. And then she went over yesterday and they threw they basically kicked her out. So and she never got to see the president again, who on Friday night said, I've made my decision. This is what I'm doing. I'm going with City Bell. So his own staff just completely submarines and slow walks and st pushes sticks into the spokes of the president's bicycle. They are trying to make him lose. Well, you just heard there. Wow. OK, now, okay. now we're going to back up here a little bit. And see if I can catch some more of the first part of the interview. Let's see if we get it here. See what I put up with for four years. And I, my heart broke for the guy. Okay. This is guy Pat Cipollone. I, here it is. Here it is. Let's go. Desk pukes. You know what right. they are? They're desperate to keep him from doing what he knows is needs to be done. They're desperate. That's why they're reacting that way. They I are. Mean, we, Flynn and I and Sydney after 30 minutes. And by the way, Sydney at one point got up on her feet and gave them a tongue lashing. At one point I said, and right in front of them, I said, sir, just so you know, it is, uh, you, know, I, you know, I've been swimming on the outskirts of your administration here in town for a couple months. I've met a lot of people who work here. They are telling me that they are getting the message from these people, that they are getting the message from their leadership to just get the president to concede. And that, that's the only time the president was, I'd say, startled and not lost his composure. But he was, he said, who, who, who who's saying that? And I said, there's this guy, Pat Cipollone. I keep hearing his name. He's the guy telling everyone to, and the president looked at the guy standing two steps back from me. And I said, are you Pat Cipollone? Yeah, well, that's okay. This is the guy. And then Pat Cipollone said, he didn't even deny it. He gave this sort of mealy mouth. Well, I, I don't even know what I said, what he said. And I said, Mr. President, this guy's lying through his teeth. He's lying through his teeth to you. The question all said, you should, we all said to him right in front of them. We said, you should fire these guys right now. Make Sydney in charge, put Flynn. I said, put Flynn, Flynn's your general. Make Flynn, he's the people's general. Make him your, your guy, your field marshal to run this, and you will be in. On January 20th, you will be in and have Sydney Powell be your White House general counsel, and you will win this battle. If you stick with these people you have on this side of me, you're not going to win this. So you, you can see they want you to lose. They absolutely want you to lose. And the president was, exactly. well, I don't want to say too much of what he said, but none of this was falling on deaf ears if anything he was saying basically do you see what i put up with for four years and I, my heart broke for the guy mm. that is incredible rick does go on to say and i have to agree with rick on this issue as well is that he really is concerned about uh, uh rudy giuliani and that he's also part of the maybe the uh, he alleges that he may be part of the bush uh clan that would also be there to overthrow the president. Even though he acts like he's for him, uh, he threw off the best attorney that they had, Sidney Powell, that clearly seemed to be for the president of the United States. So a lot of things are going on. I, I, I'm just troubled by these things. I'm startled by them. And to think that, uh, you know, we're dealing with another coup d'etat. We're dealing with another situation like what John F. Kennedy dealt with when he was in office. And again, it doesn't excuse a lot of the issues that the president has done that I totally am in disagreement with him on. But I also realize when he's being directed by these thugs that you see behind him now and other thugs that are there, uh, you know, what what can you expect? Uh, I mean, Rick goes on to say there are a bunch of snakes in there. They're illusionists is what they are. Uh, they just want him to disappear and go away. That's exactly what they're wanting to have happen. Now, with all this going on, right, with everything that we see, Trump, Republican officials have won. I want you to see this as well. This article here came out yesterday. 
or two days ago, Trump Republican officials have won zero out of at least 40 lawsuits they filed since Election Day. No wonder why they're losing all these elections, be, or all these lawsuits, because his whole team is against him. You know, a good friend of mine that's an advisor to the president, he's not on that side of the fence. I can tell you that right now. He's more supportive of the president. And he has clearly indicated to me that the president needs to make a move and deal with the problems that are there. I, I, I'm blown away by the things that are happening, right? Michael Cohen just turned on him, right? Uh, Mark Meadows, his chief of staff, all turned on him. So, I mean, every bit of this is troubling for me as I see this. Now, now we're dealing with the situation of Iran. Trump warns Iran against additional attacks on Americans in Iraq. And as I said to you, you got to remember, what's the president dealing with? He does love America and he does care for the American people when it comes to that. You know, I mean, he's got his own benefits as well. You know, it's just like in, in dealing with this warp speed. He profits from it because he's invested in it as well. Th these are kind of hypocritical issues. But you got to understand, too, who's pulling the strings in behind the scenes on this. And that's the, the alarming part that we're dealing with right now. So, so Trump warns Iran against additional attacks on America. But you have to remember, as we shared with you already, the plan, it was Trump's own administration that had contacted the Mujahideen. Here it is right here. Said the intel community is furious with Trump. That is why they are forced to outsource the red flag. I don't understand. Apparently the Mujahideen al khalik were initially approached by the administration. Does the president of the United States have any clue that his administration has contacted the Iranian Mujahideen to pull a false flag on American citizens and kill American citizens to justify satisfying Israel's war on Iran. Can somebody get the message to the president? Because this intel here is coming right out of the Middle East there, the people that know the Muhammadin al uh, uh, uh there in Iran and know for a fact that they were contacted by the Trump administration. All right. Now, then we go on to it. All right. And of course, this video here that just came out, uh, Iran releasing the footage there uh, in this video here. This is when uh, you can see back there in the background right there. This is when they killed Soleimani. Now, they, they let Trump take the, the heat for that, that it was Trump to give the authorization to kill Soleimani, I guess, to kind of make him feel like a great hero. He took out the greatest threat that they felt like of Iran. But in reality, what were they doing even then? They were only putting Trump as the target guy for doing this. Soleimani was a good man. He was not a bad man. He was only trying to help liberate Syria from all the thugs in the Middle East, which includes a little country south of Lebanon. It includes Saudi Arabia, Turkey, and the United States, all out there trying to overthrow Bashar al-Assad. As it is told to me by a Pentagon source, is that if you break the backbone of Syria, then you will get the rest of the Arabic nations to come into agreement with Israel's desire for this one world government. This is why they've targeted them like they have. Now, let's move on, though, with the situation. Uh, and by the way, this is also important. The third coronavirus lockdown rules everything you need to know. This was on the Jerusalem Post today. Israel is going under another lockdown starting December 27th. Now, why do I post this up here? What has this got to do with Iran? If you remember, I shared with you the intel that we had right out of Israel, right out of the intelligence community in Israel, that the lockdown in Israel is all being done as a smokescreen because in reality, what they're really doing is they're going to war with Iran. And each time they've done the lockdown here recently, they thought they were going to go do the war with Iran then, but it didn't happen. But now, as we've been told, it is game on. I'm going to share with you, just to give you an idea, this is from a good friend of mine, an Israeli journalist out of Israel, got this information today. The military craft, the Russian flying radar model A-50, apparently transferred to Syria. 
And the reason for sending uh, the A-50 plane to the Middle East appears to be due to the instability of the situation in northern Syria, which is reflected in several attempts by pro-Turkish jihadists to launch an attack on the city of Ain Isa uh, Tel uh, Abiyad district. Now that was part, he's quoting for me here, part of an official news report. I'll show you that news report. Uh, let's see here if I, I know I've got it in here somewhere. Uh, oh gosh, where did I put it at? All right, I don't have it in there, so I'll right, we'll have to skip it. I had it up there a minute ago, but maybe I lost that one there. But anyway, but he was actually quoting part of an official news report there. But then he goes on and he puts in some of his own thoughts on there. Um, he said, on Monday it was reported the Russian tank carrying ship was seen sailing uh, to Syria after crossing the Basra Strait, the Russian Ministry of Defense appears to be strengthening Syrian army for, army forces at a time when the Turkish-backed militants are preparing a large-scale attack on the northern rural area of Raqqa and northeast Syria, uh, the country. I'm sorry, that's not what I wanted to get to. It's there here in the last couple of sentences here. It is possible that the Russians have received information about an imminent American operation in Iraq, in Iran, against the armed forces of Iran, and it is interested in receiving all the electronic signals that will uh, be activated in the ultra-modern combat systems of the U.S. The Russians have not yet been exposed to these capabilities and are now trying to obtain intelligence on the subject. So this was uh, the good friend of mine, Israeli journalist, that shared that a bit of his own personal information regarding this, not so much that it was there because of the situation with Turkey, but to monitor how the U.S. is going to deal with Iran. He also shared with me in another uh, letter there that it appears to be my own sources that are telling me that this war with Iran is not, a, as I wrote to him recently, it's not a matter of if, but when, that he also confirmed that yes, he can see that because some of the things that he knows of going on inside of Israel right now would confirm that yes, it is a, a very real possibility of an imminent war with Iran. So what is going to happen here? They're going to play. See, Trump, like I said, he cares about American lives. And as he said on his Twitter today, if there's another American life lost, Iran's going to pay. All right. He doesn't realize, perhaps in my book on this case, that he's being manipulated. This is exactly what they want. And the president has already given Israel everything they've actually asked for. I mean, you know, is he guilty of these things? Yes, he could have been a president and stand up and said, no, I'm not going to do this. But he didn't. All right, so there's, you know, he's, he's got the blame to, to share on his own as well when it comes to these things. But then again, how does a man run a country? And this has been going on. This is nothing new. Every president that we've ever had in the United States has all been manipulated, at least going back to Ronald Reagan. They've been manipulated to follow the plan for a one world government, one world order, and a one world religion for that fact. And of course, Israel is going to be the host nation for all of this. And it doesn't help him that his advisors, part of the New Apostolic Reformation and part of, uh, you know, the evangelical movement, that are also so blinded to prophecy and been blinded to the Schofield garbage that's been put out, that they're all falling for the same narrative and they're causing the president also to go in that same direction. So the deep state is not just his advisors that are 95 plus percent uh, have a direct relationship with the country south of Lebanon, but it's also the Christians that are also backing Israel and getting the president to do the same. He's got more than a more deep swamp that he could ever imagine to unravel. And I don't see how it's going to happen. I really don't see how it's going to happen. I mean, who knows? I mean, anything's possible. But uh, quite frankly, it seems to me that his own his own inner circle, right down Pompeo, all of them, Cohen, uh, you name it, <laughs> the the whole group is bent on throwing him out and making sure Biden gets in because they're ready to destroy this nation. Israel will use, as I was told by their own intel people, that China will be the next world superpower and they will use China to bring this nation down. That's right out of their own circles. So what book are we really playing by? Anyway, 
I'm Stephen Benoon. You are watching Israeli News Live. That's the, the A-50, the Russian aircraft that is being used in Syria. It's an old article there, but just kind of give you an idea of what that uh, that flying plane looks like. And also in closing here, let me just kind of throw this in for you as well. Uh, this was sent to me by Nick. I uh, Actually, another friend sent this to me as well uh, on Twitter there. This was a massive asteroid that hit China today. And I just want to share that with you. They we're seeing these more and more and more. This thing really, really was, was huge uh, that came in there. So lit up the skies like you would not believe there. You can see it again there. Another, another view of the camera caught it as it came over. Uh, and that was actually in, uh, what part of China was they? <clears throat> I forget where that, they said that was actually at. Uh, but it did crash in China there. Uh, it's in uh, Qinghai province is where that took place there. Uh, and by the way, I did get a secondary confirmation besides the first confirmation about what Rick said on the program today uh, about this meeting. I was able to get more confirmation about the things going on. One thing that was uh, disturbing to me is I was being told on the second confirmation, Trump will not actually leave, but it was kind of related to me that we may end up seeing that we have two presidents how in the world that could ever be? I have no clue. The, the, uh, the, the source there was unable to give any elaboration on what that means uh, through their contacts as well. Uh, but we'll just have to wait and see how that all plays out. I'm Stephen Benoon. Thank you for listening. Don't forget our new address there. For those of you that want to support the memory is at the top of the page. Don't forget your EMP shield, especially with what they're doing in the White House right now. The threat of China coming is growing more real day by day. But don't forget the neck that is turning the head of not only China, but of the president of the United States as well. And I think you guys can read between the line. In fact, I wish I had a glass of orange juice right now. Maybe that might give you the better uh, uh, analogy of what I'm trying to say here for those of you that are missing the point. Stephen Benoon with Israeli News Live. Thank you and God bless you. IsraeliNewsLive.org, our website. Don't forget also in the description below, you will have the links to all of our different channels where our videos show up at, including Patreon. Uh, we're, we're talking about uh, brand new tube, iConnectFX.com, and also uh, don't forget the app. The app we heard, we have a big audience that now listens to our broadcast via app, both Android and Apple products there, Israeli News Live. Definitely sign up on that. That's another uncensored platform, and we appreciate that, as well as iConnectFX.com. Thank you, and thank you for listening.